welcome everyone this is mrs d ravina judy dolly from the department of ece karunya university i would like to handle a topic related to sampling theorem and we'll also see how to use sampling theorem using simulink in matlab all of us know analog to digital conversion requires two basic steps an analog signal is continuous in both its amplitude and in its time period so we have two tasks to do now we have to change the continuous amplitude signal to a discrete amplitude signal in the same way a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal so these are the two tasks now to convert a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal we go in for a technique called sampling where all the signals are converted to samples of times per second and if the second task is continuous amplitude need to be converted to discrete amplitude so we go in for a technique called quantization where we round off the amplitude values to the nearest value so now our signal output will be a digital signal now the question arises why we go for sampling theorem now we if we consider a periodic signal to exactly reconstruct the original message signal we should adopt our sampling frequency to be greater than or equal to twice its maximum frequency now what is fs is sampling frequency fm is nothing but the maximum frequency what happens when fs is lesser than 2 fm the periodic signal that we see will be overlapped with each other in turn like our high frequency signal coincides with the low frequency signal so we won't be able to get our output properly and this we call it to be aliasing so when fs is lesser than 2 fm overlapping occurs a technique called aliasing happens and now what happens when fs is greater than 2 fm our signals will be reconstructed properly but there will be some god bands present and now what happens when fs is equal to 2 fm now when fs is exactly equal to 2 fm the samples are recovered or reconstructed properly and now we'll see sampling using simulink in matlab go to the simulink library open a new model for sampling and now what do we have to do we have to have two signals as inputs one is from the signal generator the other one is from the pulse generator now we'll take the first one that is from sources we are going to take a signal generator drag it drop it here and now we require a constant so we require a constant now this constant you can change it to maybe to as you wish and the signal generator double click on it let it be sign and this is use simulation time your amplitude to be 1 and frequency to be 1 okay and now what do we have to do we need to have take the second input which is the pulse generator so drag the pulse generator drop it here so this is our second input now click on your pulse generator and make it to time based and use simulation time here and set your amplitude to be maybe 5 and your period to be maybe 0.1 pulse width to be 5 phase delay to be 0 okay and now what do we have to do go to the math operation choose adder drag it drop it now to the adder we have two inputs so one from the signal generator the other from the constant and now what do we have to do we have to multiply these two inputs so whatever is the output of adder need to be multiplied with the pulse generator so we need to search for product so in the same math operations click on the product drag it and drop it here and 
the one input can be taken from the signal generator the other one can be taken from the pulse generator and this is with the product now <clears throat> now you can double click your product and just check maybe sample time you may be say you may set it to zero just click ok and now we need to view so if we need to view we need to go to sinks and we have to find out the display so maybe scope so drag it and drop it here we need another scope to see our uh, pulse generator maybe if we if you want to view the output another scope we require so one scope for your output from the adder another scope for the pulse generator and another scope to your product and now if i require maybe three axes to be shown here i can double click here choose the settings here i can change it to three maybe okay so i can have three inputs i can take one from my pulse generator another one from my adder so i'll get three different scope outputs so now you know, it is done with your sampling now save your model choose your comfortable place sample save it now execute it now if i double click on scope i can view my signal this is my message signal okay and now if i view my pulse generator i can view my pulse generator output now if i press this scope i can see three different signals coming up so this is my output you can see how it has been formed the samples are found out here at each samples you can see your samples <coughs> so this is your final output so this is your input signal this is your input signal from the sin sinusoidal or signal generator and this is your pulse generator and this is your output wherein the samples you have set it to the pulse width is, was set it to 5 and your period was set it to 0.1 so your output looks like this for sampling thank you